What is up everybody? Mike, your favorite marketing techie back with a brand new product review. Now, as you can probably see, I have a little bit of a different laptop in front of me than I usually do. And that is because over the course of the past few months, something has persuaded me to go forth and spend well over a thousand dollars to pick up the Google Pixel Book. And I picked it up with the pen, so I paid an extra $99 for that pen. And over the course of about the past two months, I have been using the Google Pixel Book on a daily basis. Those of you that have been watching my channel know that I generally don't jump into product reviews immediately. I give a week, a month, two months of actual use to whatever the product is before I actually go forth and give you guys a review because sometimes you buy things and they work absolutely amazing for the first week and then they break and they die or something else happens. So in order to avoid talking and recommending great products that then break a week later, I like to test things first. Also, with something like the Google Pixel Book, you can't really give it a week of use and really get a good grasp for how the next you know year or two uh, of your life using it is going to go. You really have to get used to it and make you know some compromises and so forth to get the most of it. Actually, I'm gonna change that. You're not making some compromises, you are making a lot. Owning the Google Pixel Book is probably the textbook definition of a love-hate relationship. And over the course of this video, I really hope to express that to you because I feel like the majority of the videos that have been out there that have reviewed the latest Google Pixel Book really just focused on the fact that it doesn't do a lot of things. And interestingly enough, I think the fact that it doesn't easily do a lot of things is actually one of the things that I enjoy about it. It's one of the things that opens you up to learn and explore and find out new things and new open source apps and programs and scripts that essentially can create compromises for you to do what you got used to doing on a Mac or a Windows laptop. Now to properly try to get everybody into the state of mind that I was in when I made this purchase, let me explain to you guys why I was shopping for a laptop, what ended up happening, what I wanted at the laptop that I was shopping for. So for those of you that, for example, watched my laptop cooler video that I did on something that I don't remember the name of, but I will link to it down below and in an annotation wherever YouTube places it, you probably caught a glimpse of my rather ancient laptop. And I have been using that rather ancient laptop for about five years now. It was actually the laptop that I started this very company with. And over the years, obviously, it's gotten really, really, really. Plus, it's extremely heavy. And we tend to like to do a lot of traveling. I mean, over the course of the year, we generally do a couple of Disney trips, a couple of Mexico trips, and it's rather annoying to lug this thing around. It wastes a ton of space, and the bulky charger, the everything, it, it was too much. So off I went, looking around for the various different laptops that were out there. And one of the things that I really wanted, I, nothing I needed, but one of the things that I really wanted was I wanted to have a touch screen. Uh, I didn't use one in the past, uh, other than obviously on my iPhone and so forth. I did not use it on a PC or anything like that in, in the past, but I just wanted to have it. Wanted something that was lightweight, something that was easy to carry around, and I really wanted something that I could take and flip around and utilize. So, off I was, looking around, and there's options out there from HP, there's options from Dell, there's options from Acer, and there's a lot of really cool, great options. And a lot of them are within the $1,000 price range. In fact, there's many that are right under the $1,000 price range, especially if you shop for sales and deals and things like that. And then Google hit me with an ad. They said, hey Mike, why don't you buy the Google Pixel Book? Sure, it's $1,000. And if you want it with the pen, it's gonna be an extra $100 on top of that. So you're at about $1,100 now before taxes, but hey, we'll give you $250 off plus 0% APR financing. Just buy it from the Google store. And they got me, guys. They sold me. In my head, I said, hey, the specs on this thing seem great. And also they're giving me 0% APR financing plus $250 off, which means I don't have to put it on any one of my credit cards. I do not have to actually do anything with it. And frankly, I won't really realize that I even bought it over the course of 18 or 24 months. I forget the exact term uh, that they give you. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, listen, the most of my work I do online, I gotta do emails, 
Got to make sure that I can access different drive files and so forth. Got to make sure that I can update Hootsuite. Got to make sure that I can log in to my servers. Got to make sure that I can, you know, have access to a terminal client and so forth. So I'm like, hey, this should all be rather perfect, right? In a Chromebook, all of it is online based. The only leisure things I do on my uh, PCs is watch Netflix or YouTube. Again, perfect on this thing, right? So two months in, here's the big takeaway. Mostly everything that you want to do on a Chromebook or specifically on the Pixelbook relies on a series of compromises. And here's what I mean. You're used to having an HTML signature in your emails. An Outlook, for example, maybe. Yeah, you're not going to here. It just, it just doesn't support it. Are you used to using like Thunderbird or a full-fledged version of Outlook and so forth and having filters that automatically move all of your different emails to the correct inboxes and so forth. None of that exists on here, no. Uh, there is an Outlook app version that you can use that's intended for Android tablets. Are you used to using Photoshop and you want to continue to use Photoshop or maybe Illustrator, especially with the cool pen, so that you can draw things and so forth, so that you can edit existing PSDs and move things around? like you would do on a Mac or a Windows computer for well within the same exact price range. You can't do that on here because Adobe hasn't built a full-fledged Photoshop version that actually works on here. <sighs> now, you do get things like Photoshop Express and a couple of sketch apps and so forth that kind of sort of work, but they will not give you nearly a fraction of the functionality that you can get from the full-fledged desktop apps but you have something. And now in theory, you can actually combine several of those apps together when working on a simple file in order to generate the end result that you want. So again, things are a series of compromises in order to do the things that you generally would do pretty easily on a Windows laptop or probably less than this thing costs. But okay, I get it. Those are a little bit more specialty type things, right? Let's go to something simple. Let's just say that we have a couple of videos and we have them on our Google Drive or our Dropbox or any one of those things, all of which is more or less supported within the file system on here. And you wanna go ahead and queue up three, four of those videos, set them up in a playlist and just go off and watch them on your Chromebook while you do whatever it is that you wanna do in the background. Something that, again, is extremely easy and simple to do on any Windows computer or any Mac and most Linux uh, systems. It's simple, you can't do it here. Now there is a video player and it plays video completely fine and it'll play it from, you know, Google Drive, it'll play it from something that's stored locally, it'll play it from Dropbox, it has no issues with that. I can even pull in videos and play them off of my Synology NAS. No issues on there but for some reason, it doesn't have playlist support. I just can't queue one thing to play after the, the other. So the compromise is that I can upload everything over to a private YouTube playlist and then watch all of that in a queue like that or do the same exact thing on Vimeo or just not have a queued playlist and just select the things that I wanna watch one by one after one video is done playing. So I get that right about now, it sounds like I really hate the Google Pixelbook. And this is pretty much where the majority of the other YouTube reviews have left off on this topic. And they do. To some extent, I do hate the Google Pixelbook. I hate the fact that it has so much hardware and such great specs, and yet it's so limited on the things that it can do. But there are things that make me absolutely love this little device. I love the fact that it's always on. It is always ready, instantly. It doesn't matter if it was off before, if I'm restarting it, whatever the case is. And yes, Windows 10 starts up pretty quickly with an SSD these days, but this thing is just bam. Every single time, without fail, it's just ready to go. I love the fact that within seconds, I can just plop it open, flip it over, take my pen and start taking notes down, right on the lock screen right without having to do much of anything else. And then just close it and go on with my day and finish up my meeting and so forth and then open it back up and my note is there and it's saved in my Google Keep, it's convenient. I love the fact that it forces you to go through all of these different workarounds, which in turn introduce you to a bunch of awesome different apps. For example, this device is the reason that I now use Google Keep for all of my to-do lists, for all of my little notes to myself, uh, even for tasks and things. I keep a list on there for what we're buying for the new kitchen that we're renovating at the house. Everything is now on Google Keep and this device is literally the reason that I went forth and did that because it introduced me to it. 
it's introduced me to a bunch of other small little open source apps that I think are great. I love the touch screen. I love the touch pad. I love the keyboard. I really like doing work on the touch screen and, and I'll explain to you why. I manage several inboxes that get a ton of different mail on behalf of clients, on behalf of my companies, and it all goes into a series of different inboxes and it's a lot, it's a lot to manage. And to be honest with you, for some reason, it's just easier for me to do it through a touch interface, to just open that thing up and just start swiping away the things that I don't want and just swiping to the other side the things that I wanna mark for later. Interestingly enough, this device has actually made me more productive because it is fairly small, it's extremely lightweight, it kind of feels like you're just bringing your tablet around with you, which I'm used to doing anyway. And now, I, I, I can do more on here than I could on, for example, just my iPad, uh, probably because of the keyboard and the pen and the mouse, and it's just very convenient and comfortable in that aspect. So I tend to want to do more. I started blogging more on Rapid Purple. I started putting out more tutorials, more articles. I wrote a whole entire product review about this, about this pic, well, sorry, not this, but about the Pixel Book, on the Pixel Book, actually in Google Keep on the Pixel Book. And I did it because it was there, it was next to me, and I actually enjoy using it. So in the end, it comes down to worth. Is it worth spending $1,000 on a Google Pixel Book versus going out there and buying something equivalent from, you know, Acer or Dell or something like that? The spec that's in here is phenomenal. You have an i5, you have 128 gigs of space on an SSD, uh, or you can go up to an i7 with 256 gigs of space, you have eight gigs of RAM on here. I mean, it's got the specs. It definitely has the specs of a thousand dollar laptop. The operating system is where it falls flat on its face. And unfortunately, I think that that is exactly where the majority of people fall off on purchasing this really beautiful designed laptop. It's the operating system and it's the things that it could do and it's how it does it and it's how it does everything else that it can't really do and requires a compromise in order to make happen. And as such, for me, it kind of puts this device into the territory of the Google Glasses, if you guys remember those. It's something that is really fun for techies and for people that like to play around with open source software and for people that would like to go ahead you know, and do boot Linux off of this and for people that would like to go ahead and build a programming or development environment on top of this. That's a lot of fun to do and it's a great device for that. So there you have it guys, an honest review on the Google Pixel Book. Why I love it, why I hate it, and why I'm just not sure that it's worth the $1,100 for most people out there. But if you're a techie like me, if you happen to just buy a lot of Google products, if you like Google as a company, if you've had the Google Glass and so forth, truly think that you'll have a lot of fun developing the things on it, and I think that it's going to be extremely convenient for you. So that's that, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, leave whatever comments, concerns, questions, or anything else that you have down in the comment section below. Follow the channel, subscribe for more videos. I'll see you soon.